Coach, what's your favorite ball? You you like them Wilsons? Do you, you like that Spalding? Yeah. What's your favorite I'm indoor the, ball? Uh, I love I love today's ball, man. That Wilson Evo. I don't know what it is. Like it mm -hmm. sticks and it's just perfect. I think that's my favorite one. But before it was always always the Spalding, always the Spalding. Okay, just because you knew the NBA was using it. Oh yeah, just because the NBA was using it. Like man, I want to be just yeah. like these guys and have everything they have. So. Anything better than a trip getting ready? Nope. For a long journey where our podcast released a new app and searching for a faith feeling, a new fixation. Given this a subscribe, it's the same sensation. Started with the day ones, they gave us food to support the season. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here for a reason. Notification bells, have some friends, all to let you know. Check your Bluetooth, connect, talk your way to the Welcome in, everyone. Episode 75, Feel the Deal with our guest coach, Tori Stamps. I'm sorry, coach. I had to go with a title that had something to do with stamps. You don't meet somebody with stamps every now and then, so I thought sure. I would be punny <laughs> with the name Seal the Deal. I won't give you no more, coach. I won't give you no <laughs> more. But I had to start. I had to start with it. So, coach, thanks for joining us today. For those who don't know, coach was, was flexible. Coach about that action. He was like, man, let's get this thing done. And most right. people... They try to big time coach and get, well, you know, let me look at my schedule. But uh, <laughs> coach said, man, we, what are we trying to do? What you want to do? So I appreciate that, coach. You're a man of action, which has got another reason why I was like, seal the deal. I feel like this, I felt like you were, you were a man of action. So, coach, let's talk about a little bit about you. Coach, yep. where'd you grow up at? Where are you from? Yeah, yeah, man. So I grew up in Fresno, California. Um, it's the Central Valley. Um, so it's about four hours away from LA, you know, two from the Bay. Um, you know, I grew up all over, man. Um, you know, it's a city of, you know, you have to do two things. You're either in the streets or you're playing sports. And, you know, I was grateful enough to be, you know, pretty good at basketball, you know, a lot of hard work and, you know, had a lot of great mentors and coaches on the way too, man. So, um, Fresno is my hometown forever rep it. You know, that's why I want to get back here to, you know, coaching and give back to this next generation of kids and, you know, give them the lot of knowledge I didn't have growing up as a kid and, you know, giving back everything that I know now that I didn't know as a player um, growing up. So, uh, yeah, I'm from Fresno, man, the 559. If I can give some of the, some of our listeners a little more context, when when Karate Kid moved to California, wasn't that Fresno area? Yep, most definitely it was. It was. Yep. And then, so, uh, Coach, how'd y'all get Paul George to come to Fresno State to play basketball? What's the draw? Man, there's really no draw in, in Fresno. So that staff did a great job of recruiting him. Um, you know, that was fun times, too, when they played, man. Um, that's when Fresno State was kind of at their peak. You know, they had a lot of battles. Um, you know, Jimmy Fredette played for BYU. You know, Kwai played for San Diego State. Um, so basketball at that time in the Mountain West is fun. But having Paul George here was huge, and he still comes back, you know, rep everything. So... Um, yeah, I don't know how that staff got it done, but they did it, man. Uh, it was a it was a great time, you know, to watch watch him watch him basketball. He he was a special player. Melvin Eli, he played in the NBA. He what that was the that was the uh did he play with the Rockets? Yeah, he played with the Rockets, he played for the Clippers. He had a few stints with a few teams. But yeah, man, he was on that team with um I believe his coach was Tarkanian, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, he those Fresno State teams was fun, man. Chris Heron, you know, Dominique Young, yeah. you know, Tark yeah. the Shark, those those were some great teams. What about Rod Higgins? Was was he uh was he a local guy or he came from somewhere else? Uh, I believe he came from somewhere else, but right. I'm not too sure though, but I believe he came from somewhere else. I mean, I know you from Fresno, but for everybody else yeah. this is the most fresno state they the bulldogs right yeah fresno state bulldogs correct yeah this is the most fresno state bulldogs outside of the 559 talk <laughs> oh for 100 for sure 100 for I, sure I, I don't even pledge allegiance i i lived in, in california but that was down in los angeles i'm i'm definitely so cal but uh yep. i ain't gonna lie i spent a lot of time couch surfing up in san francisco yep. so yep. I, I still do that norcal thing a lot all right so coach you said growing up who put that basketball in your hand first what 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 got you over to basketball yeah man so all my cousins and uncles uh my pops played um so really just came up with it um you know my my cousin ryan randolph who was close played at edison um you know the one of they were the best high school at the time and you know i was always around him so um just being around him and being around all my uncles who played you know family reunions you know everyone had big basketball games and you know 
bunch of trash talking and you know all that stuff so really just the the family competitive spirit um and just having all those guys you know who played and who loved the game and you know you know they used to have the playstations back then playing the nba live on the playstation and you know kind of basketball is everything then you know we're all lakers fans and watching kobe and shaq win the championships and man it was just a you know coming up was just a great era of basketball for me so coach i'm i'm a little curious then you brought it up so i'm just gonna stay there with it coach you the nicest in your family i mean what is it sounds like if y'all was getting through you didn't say nothing you didn't say it like man I, you know i'd be dominating you didn't say nothing so sound nah. like um that, that now is, you know coming curious. up I, as i got older i was the best man i don't think nobody can you know i don't think nobody can get with me uh obviously you know i showed come up because you know they didn't give you no foul calls and you know they you know, just beating you up <laughs> You know, use the little bro to everybody. So, but yeah, man, I think I'm the best. I don't think nobody can, you know, obviously they're all older now. So I kind of, you know, my, even my cousin, I'm like, look, man, I was like, let's go out here and hoop. And I know you can't guard me no more. And you know, all that stuff. So, you know, it's kind of fun. Even with basketball debate, the eras, you know, this era now versus the 2000s, you know, it's just tough. So I will say I'm the best though. So coach, let's talk about, let's talk about high school then. So you was a baller. You, you were definitely focused on it, right? Or were you playing other sports in high school? Man, so it's crazy. So I only played basketball. The one time I went for football, um, uh, Buchanan High School, man, big, you know, country white boys. And first time I got hit, I went home like, Dad, like, look, they, they got it, man. I'm not playing. I'm going <laughs> to stick to the hoops. And, you know, I'm out there on the court every day playing. So uh, basketball, really, man. And uh, they did a good job of just keeping us busy year round. Like we played We'll play this, you know, the high school, middle school season. We'll play 30 plus games. And, you know, in the summer, we're playing 60 games, 60 plus games, which is just nonstop. And you know, it was kind of different nowadays. It got kids kind of get burnt out, fatigued, or, you know, kind of entitled. And, but my my generation of guys, like, we we're always in the gym playing. If we weren't at, you know, we weren't at games, we're at the park, um, you know, and all that stuff. So um, just really just being around the game and, you know, just being able to just play it so much. I think that was really good for us. And, that's kind of what I think these kids lack nowadays. They don't have, like everybody said, they don't really have imagination for the game. So, Coach, what did, what, what did, this is, this is, th don't be humble right here, Coach. Don't be humble. Mm -hmm. This is your time because we want to know your, your high school. What, what's the best y'all did? Y'all made it to regionals. Y'all made it to state um, playoffs. State playoffs. Yeah. So, uh, my freshman year, I went to Central High School. Um, Head coach was Lauren LeBeau, great coach. Um, when I tell you, those are, those are the most talented guys I've ever seen, um, from the, the sophomores, the juniors, and seniors. Man, those guys were special, man. Like, in practice, it was a brawl. Guys want to rip their arm off. Um, you know, it was just it was just crazy, man. And, you know, ever since then, I'm like, dang, like, you know, if you really want to do this basketball stuff, you really got to go in there with that mentality and attitude of just hard work and, you know, wanting to get better. So, um, yeah, man, just that, I think that setting the tone my freshman year, uh, the coaching staff did a great job, man. And, you know, that's kind of, uh, why I am today, man. Those guys would do anything for me. You know, I didn't have a refrigerator in my home and those guys went out and brought me a refrigerator the next day, man. So it's just crazy, man. And, you know, I'm forever grateful for those coaches. But, hey, I, we, we gonna get back to that coach. Hey coach, when I moved to California, I, I'm an East coast dude. Coach, and, and I want to talk a little bit about that later, but, uh, hey, coach, there ain't no place outside of California when you, like, you move into a spot and there ain't no fridge. What, what, what's that about? Talk to me about that, coach, because I bet for some of our listeners, this is their first time hearing about that. Yeah, what, man. So why people got to take refrigerators with them? Yeah, it was crazy, man. So, you know, my, um, this coming up at the time, you know, family didn't have much. We just got a house and there was no refrigerator in the crib and. You know, it was just, you know, you use all your money just getting the crib. And, yeah. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, dang, okay, so there's no fridge. And, you know, me, like, at the time, I never used to ask people for nothing. And, you know, the coaches kind of see, you know, something, something was bothering me. I told them, like, look, it's like, you know, we don't have this in our house. And, you know, if you did, it'd be, like, a huge help. And I kid you not, the next day later, those guys came with a truck and brought us a fridge, man. It was the yeah. – I knew then, I knew then, like, these guys were, like, the coaches I want to fight for every day, so – Coach, what were you known for as a player in high school? What, what were you? Man, yeah, everybody just called me a bully. You know, just James Harden as just getting to the basket. Uh, you know, not dribbling so much. Just just uh, really scoring and you know, versatile. Um, you know, I was one of the few guys on my high school team that played the one, two, three, four, and five. So just being versatile and just being able to do different things. What was your wait, wait, wait? You played the five. 
Coach, what size were you senior year? Uh, I was about six three, about two twenty five. Um, but the yeah. thing is, so so in, in Fresno, the five is a little different here. So the one five are like the one and two dribble drive offense. The four is the uh, essentially your traditional five man. So um, I was able to play, you know, all those positions. So in Fresno, there's really not there's not a lot of height. Um, I think my class was like really the last of it. So you can really get uh, get a get away with being an undersized, you know, that four or five man. Oh, okay, Coach. Was you were were you a rim rocker? Did you have to you uh, used to used to levitate a little not, bit? Not, or? Not, not so much, man. But you know, you get up there w once or twice. Uh, but really, man, like, uh, like I, just, I'm not saying I'm James Harden, but you know, similar to him, a lot of layups, a lot of threes, you know, pull ups and stuff like that. So but I'm gonna get off of high school shortly. But, but, but this is the time we want to know. All right, think about it. What was your best game? Give, give me. I, I'm gonna just stay senior year. But uh, what was your best game? Did you, you ever get? Especially like if you was playing at that four or five, maybe you got a bunch of rebounds. You get any yeah. 30, 20, tens? Any... Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have no 30 point games till I got to college. Yeah. High school, it's probably like 20 and 12, you know, 20, you know, 10 around there. You know, that was kind of like an annual thing because uh, my team was so talented. Like, you couldn't help off of nobody. You know, point guard was really good. The wings were really good. Uh, you had another guy in the backcourt with me who was really good. So my team was like really, my my, my uh, class was really special. So a lot of 2010, you know, 28s and stuff like that. So Okay, that's nice with it. So so coach, it sounded like you had a good time in high school. It's senior year, you in line, maybe you brown bag, lunched it, that's fine. But let's say you in the cafeteria, lunch lady in the hairnet just went schlop. <laughs> And put some food on that tray. Right. Where are you sitting at? What table are you sitting at when it's time to walk up in that cafeteria? Man, you know what's crazy about me? I really got along with everybody. I wasn't the guy who was like, man, I ain't sitting with this guy, that mm -hmm. guy. Um, I really got along with anybody. So I really sit anywhere. Um, but for oh. the most part, though, I sit with, uh, you know, the football players, basketball players. Um, you know, even guys who didn't even play sports. You know, I, I got a connection with off the court. So uh, I really got along with everybody. And that's kind of like. Uh, I think that's why uh, today why I'm coaching. Um, like a lot of these kids, I can relate to all of them because I've been all the, in all their places, you know, from being, you know, the outside person to being the, you know, the athlete and all that. So I think I kind of I pride myself on that, of being, you know, versatile, of being, uh, being able to connect with players on, on different facets. Coach, what when, when you were growing up, it sounds like you spent a lot of time in the court working on your game. Did that come naturally? Or coaches started beating it into you and then you realize, oh, yo, I like being a gym rat. Do you feel like that was inherent or someone had to build that in you? Uh, nah, man. We, I, I wanted to be in the gym all the time. Like, there's points at the time, like, I mean, now I look back and I feel bad. You know, I used to lie to people, like, hey, like, we're supposed to practice in here at this time, but I really just wanted to get in the gym. You know, sometimes I'll be in gyms I'm not supposed to be in. Uh, but that was just me wanting to be, you know, the player I am. And there was a lot of us like that. Like, if we can go find a court, we're going to go play. Um, there was apartments, you know, uh, where we had, that had a half court, and we'd go sink in there and play all the time. So it's just really just us wanting to be in the gym and wanting to work all the time. So I was kind of grateful I had running mates with me who wanted to do that as well. Coach, what were you know? What were you – were you voted anything in high school? Like, most likely to whatever. Did, did you get yeah, any of those yeah. accolades? So a lot of the times I got class clown, you know, because I was always being funny. I was all the guys doing the goofy stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really about it. I, mean, I haven't checked my yearbook in so long, but that was really – I was always a class clown. I was always giving people the, the laugh. Um, I was – person just to lighten up the room man like there's always you know yeah. uh, the school i went to there's always tension between people you know you know gangs and whatever it is so and i try to like just bridge the gap and just you know just have those guys laughing and all that stuff so um i think that would be it what did those opportunities look like coming out of high school you you've already let the cat out the bag that you had those opportunities to play in college um what how many colleges what what was that yeah. attention like for you um, so the journey was unique, man. So coming out of high school, uh, my senior year, um, I was so, I was kind of like burnt out on basketball almost just because I played so much. Um, so essentially, um, I wasn't going to play, um, uh, but I met somebody who connected me with, um, Tony Costello, um, you know, rest in peace, Tony, uh, Las, uh, Las Positas College in Livermore, California. And he brought me up there. Tony loved him. Um, but it was just a unfortunate, you know, event. 
um, you know, he passed away with uh, pancreatic cancer, you know, days before the season. And, um, you know, I went there solely on him. So it was just kind of a, you know, weird situation. I kind of didn't give any colleges, uh, you know, a, a real chance just because I just love that coach so much, just because, you know, he really wanted me, you know, he wanted me to play, you know, this position and he was set on it. And, you know, the guy, he, he and essentially inserted me into the, he inserted me into the situation, you know, right away, um, to playing right away. So, um, so it was a good, it was a good situation. Oh, that's good. It, 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 I think you got to be in the right situation. I always hear about, yep. I, I played with some, some guys, known some guys that have been at different schools and yep. after they transfer, they've always said, man, it wasn't the right situation. I thought I could make it work. I wasted a lot yep. of time there and then I landed in the right spot. So right. Glad, glad to hear that. So was it, was it the offense? Uh, was it, was it the style of play? What, what made man, you so, so happy with your college experience? Man, so uh, so there was a junior college. So I was only there. Uh, I played there one year. Uh, but mm -hmm. Tony, to Tony's credit, man, it was just just the way he was as a coach. I didn't even know what his philosophies was on offense and defense. I never asked. Um, as soon as I stepped on the court, uh, you know, first few days of practice, he had me playing the starting point guard position. Um, and I never played point guard really, you know, up until that point. So um, I just think then, and, you know, as soon as I enrolled, uh, we had summer tournament and, you know, I kind of figured out then I, <laughs> I wasn't really a point guard. Um, you know, I was <laughs> guarding good. faster, smaller guys, and I've never got crossover in my life. And the guy floored me the first possession of the game. So yeah. I'm like, you know, kind of a reality check, but it was good for me though. Um, you just learning, you know, just making sure, you know, I was comfortable at different stuff. But I just think, man, Tony was such a great guy, and um, just his presence as a coach was was more than enough for me to commit. Um, after that, I went to um, I transferred. I went to De Anza College um, in Cupertino, California, uh, with Coach Jason, uh, coaching Coach JD, basically. I um, mean, he's been there forever. A great, another great coach, another super likable guy, but. He's the type of guy, he's kind of no nonsense. Um, so I think that's what I love most about him. And he kind of just let me be. Um, you know, we had another season where there's so much unforeseen circumstances where players not eligible, guys getting hurt. And, you know, it was kind of a, a rough, you know, season. And, you know, he kind of just let me do this, do me the second half of the season. You know, my job on the team was to just go score points. And, you know, I did that. We beat, you know, the top ranked San Jose City with, seven players um you know i scored 30 points and all that stuff multiple times so um just both those juco experiences really just molded me to what you know to what i am and just showed me that you know it's just uh, started getting me to think more outside of basketball like okay now i see you know basketball i knew i was really good but my dream was always to be in the nba and now i'm like okay like dang is this really what i want to do and um i kind of had a, like an epiphany after that season where Man, I started coaching AAU, and I loved it. Um, but I knew that I wanted to go back to college and finish uh, my degree. So after that, I transferred. Um, a year later, transferred to Evangel University. Um, mm -hmm. Another great, legendary coach, Steve Jenkins. Um, Hall of Fame guy, and he brought me in open arms. And, you know, I'm just, just so grateful for him because he allowed me to be the first person in my family to, uh, to graduate a degree. So... I kind of had a unique basketball journey, but man, it was nothing I would trade anything for. So, coach, what's your favorite ball? You you like them Wilsons? You you like that Spalding? Man, what's your favorite I'm indoor the, ball? Uh, I love I love today's ball, man. That Wilson Evo. I don't know what it is. Like it mm -hmm. sticks and it's just perfect. I think that's my favorite one. But before it was always always the Spalding, always the Spalding. Okay, just because you knew the NBA was using it. Oh, yeah, just because the NBA was using it. Like, man, I want to be just yeah. like these guys and have everything they have, so. You remember when they switched it up, you know, quickly? They It went with that different grip. What did you right. think about it then? Did you like that new grip, or you was happy that they went back? Um, I was kind of happy they went back. Yeah. Um, Just because guys were so – it was just weird because guys weren't making shots. I'm like, okay, why are so many guys missing shots? And I was like, guys usually – like, it was the lowest percent of the, uh, I think, shots made in a long time in the NBA. So yeah. I'm not a big analytics guy. I hate analytics. But, I mean, that ball was just – it was terrible. So I'm glad they went back. So we had your journey after 
college. What did yep. you decide then? Did you consider taking any shots to go overseas, trying to see what, what we now call the G League? Would, what, what did you think once that time was up? Oh, and congratulations being your first in your family to get that piece of paper. Yep, well yep. done. But what did, what did what were those decisions like when college was over? Man, so uh, after college is over, obviously you have some interest, you know, playing college ball because there's just, I mean, pro ball because there's just so many teams professionally. Um, so I went to Bosnia during that COVID year. It was kind of, eh. Um, but I already knew I wanted to coach. Um, so after that, you know, I went back to Evangel, um, went on staff with them, you know, where I graduated from. And, you know, they gave me three to four great years of just learning how to do everything. So, you know, if I was watching the jerseys, I'm watching, uh, you know, working out the kids, I'm on the court doing stuff. I'm help, I'm doing the help doing the uh, practice plan, help doing the, you know, scatter report, you know, just doing everything. And I'm grateful they let me to do that because, you know, a lot of people my age don't uh, be able to get to do that kind of experience right out the gate. So... Like I said, I've been grateful, um, and those guys have been great. And the current coach, Burt Cable there, you know, he, he's probably my favorite boss ever. Um, I told him if they ever get more money for another coach, like, I want to come back because, you know, it, like, you want to work for guys like that who's selfless, you know, who's about the team, um, you know, a great person, you know, treats everybody the same. So, um, yeah, man, just Vandro always has a special place in my heart, so. Um, then after that, went to Sunrise. So, and so what's what's Sunrise like? Where where and this is where you are currently. But but what was the draw and what keeps you there? Um. So Sunrise, man, was when you talking about elite talent, elite talent for basketball. You know, last year, you know, they had the high school team alone had Modis Brazellas, you know, Layden Blocker, Scotty Middleton. Uh, Miro Little. So, you know, they had a bunch of ESPN guys. And the prep side, you know, they had Kevin Overton, uh, JV on Guy King, you know, uh, Cooper Bowser, you know, a bunch of guys who are playing, you know, Division One basketball and playing at a high rate um, and impacting the game, uh, you know, right now. So just going from where I've been to elite talent was kind of a big, like, dang, like, you know, these guys are really good. But the thing that sets them apart, those guys want to be in the gym, man. They're like workaholics, like guys used to text me every day, like coach, let's get in the gym, let's get in the gym. Like, I'm like, dang, like you guys are wearing me out and it's <laughs> supposed to be the other way around. So um, just elite talent, but also man, people, when I, I've never met so many nice people in my life, man. The people there are so nice. Like when I got there, I'm like, dang, like are people really this nice? Cause I've never experienced anything like it. Like anybody there will give you the shirt off their back. Um, it's just a crazy experience there. Obviously, you know, they had a, elite coaches. Luke Barnwell was the high school coach at the time. Uh, now he's at Texas Tech. And Kyle Linstead was a prep uh, was a prep coach, you know, who started Sunrise. And now he's back on the high school side. So, um, man, just being a, around elite talent, connecting with elite coaches, you know, from NBA to the Division One, And, you know, I've met so many people there that you know, I never thought I would meet. So, And you're still at Sunrise now, Coach? Uh, no, I'm not. So I'm currently the head coach at Florida Coastal Prep National High School. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what what's the draw? What's the draw there? I, I can't say I'm I'm familiar. I, I, I yeah, did a lot so of traveling, but the, I don't, I don't yeah. Familiar. So they're kind of, they're they're in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Um, okay. kind of a newer program. Uh, they've been around a little bit, but they're getting they um they're getting stuff off the ground. Um, you know. What I love about them, they're they're right on the beach. You know, thirty seconds, you can walk over to the beach. Um, yeah. You know, they have their own facilities. Um, just a big time situation. Um, they kind of, I was kind of first like their first big major hire for a coach. Um, you know, I kind of got it in over my head year one. Um, you know, I scheduled OKO. We went down to OKO, got the brakes beat off of us. Uh, oh, but but well. it, you know, it's just a it's just a great um it's just a great experience for the kids and kind of a, a bar to see where you need to be and. You know, you kind of you want to get to that level, you know, where Oko is, and you know, it's just a good situation where I can just go build my own thing as well too, and let me be me. So, Coach, how far away from Mont Verde are you? Are you guys? Uh, probably like four or five hours, so not far at all. Uh, down so the opposite. Want... So we're on the um the the Alabama coast, like that border right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so you can uh, strategically avoid them. You don't have to have them on a schedule oh, every year. Yeah, 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 man. Like especially this year, like Cooper Flag and those boys are real, man. 
real. Oh, and I try God. to tell people all the time, people like, people think he's not as good as he is, but I'm like, trust me, man. Like those guys are real up there. So, coach, as you try to build, what what's going to be the draw? How are you going to be able to get the top talent so you could build a Mount Verde? Kind of curious. Yeah. Um. So I think the draw for me would be, um, just the basketball experience and just where I've been. Um, yeah. And I've been to I've been to Sunrise, you know, I was at Evangel. Um, just giving back the the different things I've learned. Um yeah. and just implement it all in one. Just take everything I learned from all these coaches um and put it in one. But I think the biggest one is obviously everybody's just gonna say the location, but the basketball piece, the skills training, um, the weight training. So you kinda just you gotta separate yourself uh from those schools. But obviously it's hard when you got, you know, in Florida alone, you got Monverd, you got IMG, you got DME, um, mm-hmm. then you got, you know, really good high schools out here. So, and yeah. the high schools kind of chain to the point where, you know, guys just want to go play, you know, the best location and the best school. So, um, you know, it was kind of a challenge, but I think I've done a good job of getting some really good kids here. And we had a good, really good team and had a really good first half of the season. Coach, do you have, uh, are, are you doing a lot of the recruiting visits or you have assistance with that? Um, so it was really me just showing my face. Um, hopefully I can get to the point where your your um where your assistants get to do all that. But I just think um just for the meantime, I'm I'm so connected um, you know, with a lot of people that you know I have a lot of trust from people and they they trust me to do things. So um I for me right now, I'm I'm doing all this stuff. So coach, the the reason I asked is uh I gotta know where your allegiances lie, coach. I'm about to- I, I think I think I told you this was gonna be nice and easy, but this I lied, Coach. We about to get to some heavy stuff right here. I'm about okay. To, okay. Your listeners, you about to lose some of your. Which, what I said, you was at eleven thousand on IG. You are gonna be mm-hmm. at nine thousand. I'm done with you. <laughs> coach, I gotta know. I'm in Austin, Texas. Okay. You in Florida? I used to live in Florida, in Central Florida. Yep. And you from California? Coach, mm-hmm. the best ball players at. Now I'm, I'm gonna give you a quick second. The, the Clippers, they doing their thing right now. Mm-hmm. They're number four in the West in standings. Yep. And all the boys from California, Westbrook, uh, Harden, Kawhi, yeah. <laughs> they, they all, all, Paul George, we already talked about, but all them boys from California. So, no. For me, it's easy. California. It's not, no, wait, wait, no, what? it's California. No debate. Coach. No debate. No debate. Them Florida boys is different. You you been they down are. Miami, coach? Oh yeah, 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 they different. But for me, is I think as a whole, man, California is different. It's different. Um, even now, we you know we got a bunch of dudes in the league, and we got a bunch of dudes that's going to be in the league here soon. I even think from the high school standpoint, um, yeah. you know, we got a lot of a lot of great ballers that's up and coming right now, and you know, the senior class I think this year can go compete with anybody. If we did state by state, take the top twelve. Seniors from each state, I think California will come out one, two, one or two. So oh, that's saying a lot, bro. That's oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I, I'm gonna press you one more on that. I'm pressing you on one more of that. Okay. Coach. I I just I don't really know how I really can 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 get his teeth. All right. So coach, what you you got it? You got any shot getting some of those kids from California? Even since you since um, you leaning so hard with them. <laughs> is there any opportunities, or is that a hard thing to, to try to pull um, off? California kids so tough to get um, just because um, it's just so far away from home. Yeah. Um, and why leave California to go to Florida, you know? Um, California high school is really good, um, you know, especially in uh, SoCal. And it's the same yeah. thing for Texas, you know? People have to, people, uh, have to scrape and fight for Trey Johnson. Trey Johnson didn't want to leave. So, yeah. you know, it's just hard for kids who are really that good. You know, they're going to be good wherever they go, um, you know, regardless of the high school. So um, you really got to sell these kids nowadays just to get them to go because a lot of these kids are staying at their normal high schools now. So um, it's kind of been a, a hard thing to to get around uh, and, and recruit kids with. Let's get to let's get to let's get to your coaching staff. Coach, yep. are you what we call a player's coach? Are you uh, are you X's and O's stick to the system? If 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 I'm a street ball legend, you don't want nothing to do with me because I'm too street. Like, like what, what, how, which way do you go, coach? 
Yeah, man. So I think my basic principles, I, I love, I'm a motion offense type of guy. So I give you a bunch of freedom, you know, screens, uh, read and react, you know, um, you know, a lot of threes, um, you know, a lot of great ball movement, similar to the Warriors. Uh, but there's always going to be that one or two guys you have on your team who can just go get a bucket, you know. And Kentucky this year is kind of facing that, you know, with Rob and some of those guys where you just got to let them go. And yeah. Coach Cow does a good job of, you know, putting in a leash on those guys. You got three or four times to, you know, go do it. And, you know, if you exceed that of messing it up, then you get pulled out. So um, I'm a motion guy, but obviously if you have guys like that, you got to let them go. You know, you can't hinder them. And that's only going to help your team because you makes you more dangerous, you know, uh, when you got a guy who can go put the ball in the hoop anytime he wants. So um, defensively, you know, I'm like man-to-man, -man. Um, you know, pack line defense, make guys shoot. Um, you know, muck it up a little bit. And, you know, if I have a team who's long, lanky, and athletic, I love the press. Um, you know, press all game and, you know, fall back into that pack line. So uh, I am a player's coach, though, cause obviously because I played. Um, so I'm not, you know, crazy hard on them, but you still have that fine line of, you know, respecting the game and, you know, doing stuff the right way. So so I got, I got, three, I got three items along that. You opening facilities to let people get a chance to, to get on that court. Uh, you and the, the three-pointer and, and how it's affected the game. And yeah. then after I make a play or I dunk, uh, how you treat me. So let's go to the first one. Uh, yeah. Coach, you said to yourself, you, you couldn't – I mean, you had to get on the court. What, mm -hmm. what, what do you say to your kids who they, – they trying to find places to hoop. You got any connects? That that you oh, yeah. around the town or anything? Yeah, how do yeah, you help them out? They want to get extra yeah. work. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, obviously, you, you hit local other high schools. Um, ask them if they can use the gym. But also, the rec center too. The rec center has been great for us. And also, there's a church with the gym too. So, just having to be able to have a connection with all those people all in one to be able yeah. to you know let you use all their facilities and stuff. Coach, let's get let's get to the to the second one. Uh, so the game has changed, Coach. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you're an old head, but yep. it ain't what it used to be. And uh, we, we call it the Steph Curry effect. Yep. Uh, are you embracing the three? You like the art of the mid range? You like the pounded down there? What, what, what what's your 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 view on all the threes that everyone wants to shoot? Man, so it's hard to it's hard to deny what's happening to the game right now. I mean, you got to take threes. Um, the tough part about that is what I tell my kids all the time. You can shoot as many threes as you want, but you guys don't work on these. Um, you can have a team who go shoot 20 threes, but ha realistically, how many of those guys are up there getting shot? So it's just tough, man, because everybody thinks they can shoot now. And yeah. a lot of people think they're shooters, and they're not shooters. And a lot of people don't work on their game. So the game's kind of in a funky spot because everybody thinks Steph Curry just is Steph Curry overnight. And that's not true. The guy puts in hours in the gym. He's shot thousands of shots. So, but I try to do a mixture of both. Um, I don't like to stick a big guy down there. Who's not a big guy. Um, if you're a skilled big who can pass dribble shoot, you know, you only make the team that much better. Um, Cause that's kind of what the game is transitioning to um, mm -hmm. bigger guys who are skilled. So, um, I like to just be balanced. I mean, the more balanced you are, the better. Um, and I think, um, you know, try to run some sets here and there. But for the most part, man, I just, I just like the motion because it's so hard to guard. And, you know, um, Evandro does a great job of that. So I, you know, watch all the time. So um, I just think, you know, motion, I think for any coach, it's just a great principle to have. But you know, obviously, you got to stick to your philosophy. So, Coach, I just came down the lane. I caught a body. I'm hanging on the rim, mm -hmm. or I might be standing over him. Coach, what you gonna say? <laughs> hey, man, I, like I said, I'm a player's coach. Um, you can do that. Like, hey, if I'm gonna, I can't be a hypocrite because if I was in his shoes, I would do it too. Yeah. Obviously, if you're talking to the point where it's like kind of crazy, okay. But if you dunk on a guy and you stare at him, okay, I I have no issue with that because uh, that's part of the game, and and that's kind of issue I have with the game today because a lot of these referees are um, are soft. Um, they don't allow stuff to happen. As um, soon as a guy dunks the ball and stares at them, it's an instant tee. So they're kind of not ruining the game, but it's not, you know, let these kids have fun, man. But obviously keep it to a point where it's professional and, you you know, you're not taking anything away. No, I appreciate that, Coach, because that's that's something that, that I see now. Um, you know, I I played a lot of ball. I'm not a dunker, but right. as you said, if I, if I floor you, 
Right. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna look back at you on my way to knock as I do that lay. Hundred <laughs> percent. And then I, I I gotta look at you on the way back up. So hundred um, percent. That's that's where I came from, and and yep. I was just kind of curious on, on your thoughts on that. All right, so so coach, you got a kid, and I'm I'm trying the best I can, coach. I'm I, I play for you. I show up. You know yep. I'm putting in the work, coach. You know I want to go play at the next level. Something tells me though, at five foot six, and I'm quick. You know I'm strong and everything. Yep. Ain't nobody giving me no looks, coach. Well, what, what what you gonna say to me, man? Um. I think the biggest thing first is just being transparent with them. Hey, this is what you need to do better. Hey, you know, we'll just watch this film and break it down on what you need to do better. Hey, are you in the gym as long as these guys are? Because a lot of stuff plays in, into that. Kid's just not going to play because he's not going to play. He, one, he's not good. Two, he's not putting in the work. Or three, he's not doing stuff in classroom or off, you know, off the court. You know, he's he should be doing. So I just think those biggest three things. And I just think for me, man, I just love being transparent with the kid. You know, letting them know because it only helps them in the long run. So... Um, and hey, like if a kid comes up to you, like, and asks you a question, why I'm not playing or like, what should I do? And you give them the answer and they don't like it. And, and I've seen coaches say, Hey, you should transfer, you know, just the way it is now. But I, 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 I love kids who come and ask those questions because I think they're trying to get better. And I think we need more of those kids instead of, you know, I'm not saying transferring is wrong. Cause I know there's a lot of coaches out there who do, who do stuff, uh, you know, that's not, it's not right. But I think kids need to go through that and, you know, go through adversity because, you know, a lot of kids go through stuff nowadays on the on the basketball court and, um, you know, they just run away from it and, and they still end up in that same situation there and now. So. But so on that same thing, coach. OK, so say I am nice. I play for you. I'm a senior. Yep. Again, I am five, six. It looks like the growing is done. But, you know, I'm averaging I'm averaging 20. I'm I'm, I'm uh, close to double digit on assists, you know, eight or nine. I probably yep. have more. There's a couple yep. people on the team. They, they, I don't know. Every time I pass it to them, I'd be expecting. So, so they affected my stats. <laughs> right. But I do everything you ask, and and I am nice, yeah. uh, Coach. Do you? Is there pressure on you to have relationships with coaches at schools so that maybe those coaches, when you call them, you 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 might tell them, "Hey, this spring I'm gonna have a little tournament, or I want to have a combine." And I want you guys to come. Do you feel like that is something that you can do, you currently do, you will do? Because I always wonder about that. Yeah, man. So that's a tough thing. Um, obviously, um, I'm lucky enough to be well connected. Um, so I can help those kids go to small schools or, you know, small junior colleges or small Christian schools or, you know, USCAA uh, schools and, you know, allow yeah. them to go, um, you know, do their own thing. So. I think a lot of coaches need to have that uh, in their bag of connections, you know, to help kids. Because a lot of these kids think they're Division One, but they're not really Division One. So I just think um, being able to help those kids get placed is really good. Yeah. Uh, and so, Coach, what do you, what do you recommend off season? Like, are you should I go should I go join my my church league? You want me to go to the the YMCA? Oh, there we go. Thanks. There it is. So, yep. Coach, what do you want me to do in the off season? Uh, what What are your recommendations? Should I be in the gym getting stronger, working on my vertical, getting this this leg muscle up? Join my church league, spend that time by myself out on the court. I'm always kind of curious on what coaches recommend to players. Yeah, man. Um, I think the biggest thing is just work on your game, especially if you're a basketball guy who just plays basketball. Um, just getting shots up. I think the kids are super athletic nowadays, so that's not the issue. I just think they need to be more skilled, you know, if it's ball handling, um, getting up hundreds, hundreds of shots, you know, during the summer. Uh, but I tell kids all the time, don't overexert yourself. You know, it's obviously it's time for you to relax too. But, hey, play AAU, get in the gym, uh, you know, work, uh, you know, just be around your family. But if you're a guy who wants to be a scholarship player, man, you got to be in the gym, you know, majority of the summer. Uh, and playing, you know, try to play AAU if you can because that that will obviously boost your stock. And I just think just playing basketball in general, man, just having, um, like I said earlier, kids these days don't have an imagination. Like, they train so much, but when they get to the game, those moves don't work because then they don't have a defender actually in front of them. So um, I just I, I love when kids just go play basketball because that's what I did growing up. Like, I was at the park from, 
you know, 12, what, p.m. to, you know, 8, 8 p.m. We're out there all day playing. So um, just them having that imagination and playing more. I, I want – I'll tell any kid that, you know, from my program to any program, just to go play. Go play, especially go play against grown men at that. So, Yeah. Coach, I, I know that there is uh, something to be said about working hard and – that that's cool. That's cool. Those are the great stories right. of everybody that spends the time. But coach, what happens when you get like, yo, I don't even have to try, and it comes to me when you have those players, coach. You coach, you know, you got to coach them a little different. Yeah. There's differences here. You ain't oh, telling sure. me to go and spend hours upon hours in the gym because you like this twenty five that I give you every night, right? What, what do you say about those for, for young coaches that are out there, teammates of listeners that are out here? Yeah. What, what, what do you say to those guys? Um, I, obviously, every coach is going to have a kid like that. So yeah. that's first and foremost. Um, I think second, um, you have to find out you know, how they're wired and what motivates them because they're going to be motivated, uh, motivated a lot differently than a kid who wants to get to the next level and do anything he can. So, hey, maybe he doesn't need to be in the gym you know, all summer. Maybe he needs to be in there two or three times a week, you know, getting shots up, um, if it's uh, skills training, strength training. Um, but just trying to find ways just to motivate him. Obviously, those guys are your better players. So, hey, like, if you want to be a high major player, this is what you're going to have to do this summer, you know, these type of workouts. If you want to be go straight to the G League, this is what you're going to have to do, you know, on a, on a daily uh, basis. So just trying to, uh, you know, just see how they're wired and try to, you know, get them to – obviously get to that hardworking, you know, next level that they can achieve. So um, obviously they're going to be treated a little different, but, you know, just trying to get them wired, you know, to, uh, to get up there. Cause those guys who, uh, who are five-star kids and who want to go to the league, those guys are on like nonstop go. Like there's, they're, they're in the gym all the time. So, um, and I've seen it and, you know, um, I, I know it can be done. So. Yeah. I, I've seen some of those guys, and to your point, there were other things they needed to work on. They needed to focus on the grades. They needed to spend some time on social skills to, to learn to be a good teammate, uh, to, to open up their eyes, to not be such a, um, a prima donna. And, you know, those are some of the things that they need to do. Uh, so, I, you know, I was just kind of curious if you're telling them to <laughs> go join a, a karate school or something, you know, go learn a little – some teamwork or some discipline right. outside of the court stuff. Right. <laughs> the but I love I uh, love multi sport athletes. So I, I tell kids, hey, especially high school kids, go play two, three, because you learn so much different stuff. So good. That was the next thing I was gonna say, Coach. You gonna take a, a multi sport athlete? You know, can I can I play another sport and rock with you at the same time? You know, maybe I was a really good wrestler. I know when I was a kid. Uh, wrestling season and basketball overlapped. I ran indoor track and wrestle, yep. but but coast, I, I'm I'm nice. I'm nice in a couple sports. Yep. What say you when I tell you I gotta be able to do this other sport? I, I love it. Yeah, um, I say do it. Um, obviously, you I mean you're gonna have to come to terms with you know your playing time and you know all that stuff. But um, as long as you're um, you know you're upfront and honest about it, not just missing just to miss. Um, and you actually just doing the sport, you know, that you love, I man, I'm all for it. Um, if a kid wants to go run track, go run track. Cause you know, your endurance and the different type of stuff that you learn in track, you won't be able to get in basketball. Um, so I, I'm all for the, uh, multi-sport athlete kids. Okay. Uh, coach, when, when do you think a person needs to, to choose or specialize though? Do you think that ever has to happen? Man, I think so. Uh, I kind of think high school, it depends. Uh, sophomore, junior year, maybe high school. Because you really can't, you can't be, you can be great at both, but you can't really be great at both. You know, especially in football. You know, if you're a quarterback, you know, the the right reads, the footwork, um, you know, the the throwing power uh, on the court as a point guard, your, your foot, the same thing, your footwork, um, the pick and roll reads, um, you know, passing with both hands. Um, shooting, so uh, I I kind of find it hard that you can be great at both and be great at all those small little things. Um, 
But I mean, I've saw I've seen some great players who've done both. So, but I think I think it has to be j- sophomore junior year where you choose, um, because uh, ultimately though, um, if you're a great football player, man, go be great. Like, go turn it up a notch. Like, I I feel like if kids choose one, they can um, just fully focus on that and uh, be monsters. And I've seen that too, where a guy was really good at basketball. Uh, but he wanted to play football and chose football, and the guy turned out to be a monster. So, um, but like I said, I encourage both, but it has to be at some point where you choose one and really perfect that craft on that one. Coach, what what would your peers say to describe you? How would they describe you? Man, my peers would say, you know, I'm I'm goofy. Um, you know, I love basketball. Um, you know, love my family. Um, you know, I always put, you know. Uh, everybody first, you know, I do anything for anybody. Um, you know, I'm somebody that people can come talk to all the time. Um, you know, all the players like me, um, you know, relatable. So um, I think all those be the big things. And I, and I, I, and I love all that. So. Uh, coach, I believe in six degrees of separation. Who is the most interesting person in your life? And what would you do to help me get them on this podcast? They don't have to be famous as I give you a chance to think it through because most people squirm right here. That doesn't mean the richest person you know, unless that makes them interesting to you. They don't have to be the most famous person you know, unless that's interesting to you. But who's the most interesting person to you in your life? That's a great, that's a great, great question. I've never thought about that. Um, Obviously, man, just because I'm in the sport of basketball, I'd probably be a coach. Um, but I've also, um, you know, uh, a great mentor of mine recently has been Jason Powell of the Clippers. Um, he's not a coach, but he's an athletic trainer. He's been there, I think, for 15, 20 plus years. And um, being able to just, to, you know, talk to a guy who's been around the game for so long like that, yeah. um, it's been great. Um, you know, also, you know, I probably have a few, few people outside of basketball who do stuff, you know, in, in business and finance and stuff. But Really, man, I've just been so dialed into the basketball stuff that that's really all I know. So, uh, for sure, uh, I mean, it'd be Jason or, um, you know, my guy at, uh, uh, where's he at? He was at Drake last year, Corey Edwards. Um, you know, he got a new job. So, you know, one of the coaches, even my guy Ivan at Sunrise. So, uh, a lot of different coaches who have a lot of uh, different backgrounds who come from different places and, you know, whose upbringing uh, has been different as well, too. Um, so, Okay, so that second part, you put in a word for me, Coach. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Whatever you need, man. Yeah. Uh, I love what you're doing with the podcast and bringing um, different facets of people onto it, um, not just coaches, you know, people who do business and you know, people who do a bunch of stuff. So I, I love that because a lot of people are just tuned into, you know, one thing, it's sports or it's finances or music. So I, I love what you're doing, man, and it's dope. And soon, as soon as I seen your message, I know it was a little bit ago, I'm like, dang. I love to do it, man. Uh, love to talk about, you know, anything like that. So, Coach, I, I'm excited. I actually – I'm going to spoil it here, though, but uh, I got an NBA coach that's going to come on, but they can't right now. They, okay. they, they got to wait for the season to be over. Yeah, those so, guys' schedule is crazy, man. Yeah. Like, well, it's a, it's a rule. He, uh, he said the yeah. organization's rule is that yeah. yep. no, no media – Yep, yep. I, which was a shock to me. I did not know that. Learned a lot. Yep. So I, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish with uh, one or two uh, last questions here, Coach. Okay. One, uh, what, what, what's your game looking like now, and how often are you playing, Coach? That's that's, that's what we got. So I'm 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 getting back into the playing shape because um, you know a lot of kids think they they can beat you, so you got to go out there and throw them at the time. But I, I'm finally getting my win back. Um, you know, getting back in shape, but. The game's more uh, – I'm shooting a lot more, um, unfortunately. Uh, you know, one, You know, everything else goes, but, you know, your shooting don't go ever go away. So, I'm shooting more. Uh, you know, I'm passing and, you know, just trying to teach these guys, you know, different stuff. And, you know, obviously I've played and played around great players. So, just be able to, you know, work out. And I work out with some of the kids. Hey, like, this is what I – when I see a defender come out of this play, this is what I would do. Um, you know, stuff like that. So, just being able to work out and just play with the, the kids is, it has been great for me and, you know, getting back in shape. Two questions left, Coach. First question. Yeah. 
Coach, what's the biggest regret in your life that you have? Um, I think the biggest regret of my life, uh, man, I got a few. Uh, I think the biggest regret is just, uh, <laughs> I mean, all basketball related, of course. I just think the biggest one, I um, I turned down a really big time uh, Division One job, um, um, just because I I felt like I wasn't prepared for it at the time. Yeah. Uh, but now looking back at it, I wish I would have done it, just thrown into the fire. Um, yeah. The, the coach was crazy though, but it would have been worth it. Um, but I think that'd be that that's been my biggest regret because I think about it all the time, like dang, like. I really got offered a, a a position, you know, in a business. It's really hard to get into. So uh, definitely that one. Okay. And then uh, last coach, and, and this is the, the self-promotion part. Uh, how can the listeners, how can they find you? How can they stay in tune? Uh, okay. what, what, what are, what are the, the ways that we can follow and, and, and stay, stay, stay connected? For sure, man. Uh, I use a lot of Instagram and Twitter. Um, that's all the same. Coach T Stamps um, is the handle for both. And, you know, a lot of, obviously all my stuff centered around basketball. So, you know, I do a lot of, um, you know, breakdowns of players, um, you know, a lot of offensive breakdowns, uh, a lot of NBA stuff um, and stuff like that. So, and I love interacting with people too. Um, I'm not the type of person who just stuck up and is going to dub you because I don't know who you are because I don't want to talk. I, I love talking to people. Um, that's, like I said, that's one thing I pride me on and anybody can reach out to me at any time. Um, love to answer questions, phone, whatever you need, man, I'll answer it and, you know, answer the best I can and help you out or get, if you want to get coaching, get started coaching. And I know I have a few spots, uh, where, you know, coaches need help and I love to help people. So. Yeah. Coach, this was awesome. I can't, I'm looking at the time and I can't even, well, I mean, I know we wanted to get this amount of time, but we're here, we're here quick. Right. I, always like to say coach right. that means we left some meat on the bone because there's so much more I, I i i didn't even get to i see there's at least three more things here that were burning that right. i want to get to but, but that's fine and then coach uh maybe i could even bring you back and we can we can do a little yep, NBA sure. wrap up maybe somewhere closer to sure. towards the back end of the season we could talk a little sure. nba you have some back and forth Sure, 100 i love that i watch a lot of NBA and Steve, so I love it. Oh, that, that'd that be great. Okay, I'm looking forward to that, Coach. I'm going to hold you to that. Yep. Everybody, for thanks sure, for, for listening. Sure. No, most definitely. This was, Just let me know. This was awesome. Coach Tory Stamps, everyone. Uh, please follow him. And, hey, good luck. Good luck, Coach. Good luck with everything. You're, you're one of I the good ones. This, this was great. I appreciate it, man. I'll definitely be in contact with you, man. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Have All a good right. one.